Hey everybody, Melissa here. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited you're all here. So today we're going to be in Google Sheets and we're going to be talking about one of my favorite things, absolute versus relative cell references. Now hang on just a second before you go bolting towards the door yell, Melissa, you have lost your mind. I don't want to know, I don't care, and I don't need to know. Well, what if I were to tell you that absolute cell references can make your job a whole lot easier and a lot less frustrating. Have you ever been in a spreadsheet and you have something say at the bottom that you need to reference in a formula and as you insert more data, you've got to manually update your formula because that cell has moved, otherwise your formula is not gonna work at all? Me? Now, I'm going to admit this, you don't have to. I have yelled at that spreadsheet I have called that spreadsheet names. I have just given up and walked away and just had to take a break. Hmm. If we're being honest, I think we've all kind of been there and that frustrated. <laughs> so absolute cell references take that frustration away and take away the need to actually do anything manually to that formula. And I can't wait to show you how they work. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have a spreadsheet that has item, quantity, cost each, extended cost, discount, total, and then we have a fixed discount amount of 3%. Now to get our extended cost, we're gonna do equals our quantity times our cost each and hit enter. And that's gonna give us our 331.55. We can go ahead and pull this down. And then if we look at our next one, it's gonna give us B3 times C3 B3 times C3, which is what we want. The next is B4 times C4, B4 times C4, which is what we want. Now this is what we call a relative cell reference because it makes the assumption that each time you pull this formula down that you want to add one at the previous one. So this one is B4 times C4, this next one will be B5 times C5. So that is essentially what a relative cell reference is. Now let's look at our discount amount. If we do equals our extended cost times our discount and hit enter, it gives us $9.95. If we pull it down, watch what happens. Oh, everything after the $9.95 is a zero. So the default behavior of the spreadsheet is a relative cell reference. So for example, in this first one, it was D2 times B12, which is correct. But if we look at the second one, it's D3, which is correct. But if you look at where it's trying to find the discount, it's looking on the next line of B13. If we look at the next one, it's looking for the discount on B14. This is where we're going to make an absolute cell reference so that it doesn't look any place else except for here for this discount amount. Now to do that, we're gonna to go to our first one, and then we're gonna go up to our, where our B12 is. We're gonna put a dollar sign in front of our B, and a dollar sign in front of our 12. And we're gonna hit Enter. And now let's pull it down. And now it gives us the discount amount for each row. Because if you look, it's changed the first reference, which is D3, D4, and so on. But this B12 is staying the same in every row. So now let's get our total. If we do equals our extended minus our discount, that gives us our total. If we pull it down, it does a relative cell reference, which is what we want it to do. It goes D3 minus E3, D4 minus E4, D5 minus E5, and so on. So with our absolute cell reference, no matter where we move this to, it's going to update this discount column to reflect that. Let me show you what I mean. Let's add two rows in here, insert two above. Our discount, is now in B14. Let's look here, look what it did. It updated it to B14. And it did the same thing on all of the rows. Now let's completely move this discount somewhere totally different 
in the worksheet. Okay, so now it's in I-14. Let's look over here. Look here. I-14. Now let's add a new worksheet. And let's go ahead and grab it. Control X. And let's put it in a new worksheet. Okay, go back over. And look what it did. It updated the formula or the function to show that what it needs to reference is in sheet two, column B, row one. So no matter where you move that discount within your worksheet or your workbook, your formula will be automatically updated to reflect where it's at. See, what did I tell you? Your days of yelling at spreadsheets are over. Well, at least for this reason. There's plenty of other reasons to yell at spreadsheets, but we'll address that later. <laughs> Just keep in mind that your dollar signs go before your column and your row. So for example, if you want your absolute cell reference to be on B10, you would do dollar sign B, dollar sign 10. And that way, no matter where that cell moves within the spreadsheet, it will always be referenced. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel before you go. And if you have any questions, feedback, or ideas for future content, then drop me a comment and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Until then, thanks so much for watching.